New York City tourist traps that you must not miss, Brooklyn Bridge Edition. Hi, I'm Megan, a licensed New York City tour guide, and today I'm going to show you how to cross the Brooklyn Bridge, show you some fabulous sights once you're on the bridge, give you a little bit of history about the bridge, and most importantly, show you where to get some of the best pizza in New York City once you're on the other side in Brooklyn. So don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute, and let's get ready to cross the bridge. Love and talk, bring in healing to those who need a most. When I'm walking over the Brooklyn Bridge, I like to walk from Manhattan to Brooklyn. The reason for this is because when we get to Brooklyn, we're gonna get all kinds of delicious food, some of the best pizza in all of New York City. So stay tuned so you find out where to get that. If you're trying to figure out where to get on the Brooklyn Bridge from Manhattan, I usually tell people to look for a street called Chambers Street, like Harry Potter and the Chambers of Secrets. And that will bring you pretty much to the spot where I am standing right now, getting ready to cross over the Brooklyn Bridge. When you get on the Brooklyn Bridge, you need to know that there are two lanes, as the sign indicates. As you're walking from Manhattan to Brooklyn, the left side is going to be for cyclists. The right hand side is going to be for people using their feet to cross the bridge. I'm going to be using my feet to cross the bridge, so I'm going to be on the right hand side. Now as you cross the bridge, there's only this tiny white line that's painted that's separating. There's not a gate or a fence or anything, so you have to be very aware because some of the cyclists who are crossing the bridge, they're not going to stop for you, so you want to be safe and stay on the right hand side. Now you know how to cross the Brooklyn Bridge like a pro. Come on, we're going to walk over the bridge. So as I am attempting to very bravely walk backwards on the bridge, I just want to let you know that if I was to like run, I could technically do this in about 20 minutes. However, I like to stop and take photos and enjoy the beautiful view. So I usually recommend to people that they allow at least an hour to cross the bridge. That way you can take all your Instagram photos and enjoy the history. So I'm gonna go a little further up the bridge. There's a very cute dog crossing the bridge that makes me happy. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit further up the bridge and then we're gonna see some of the sights that we can see from the bridge. So we're only a little ways up the bridge. We haven't even reached the first tower yet of the Brooklyn Bridge and there's already a lot of fun stuff to see surrounding us. So behind me, you'll see this beautiful building. Um, it, it's gorgeous. It has a tower on top of it and a gold statue on top of that. That is the municipal building. Uh, it was used in movies like Ghostbusters and I'm gonna have a horrible Australian accent, but that's where Crocodile Dundee said the line, that's not a knife, this is a knife. So that's a bit of a, a movie star building. On top of that building, the gold statue, that is known as Civic Fame. And she's standing on top of like a really tall tower. There's four smaller towers around that. Those are supposed to represent the five boroughs of New York City. Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. I guess that Manhattan has a bit of an ego, so we made ourselves like the largest tower in the middle, even though we're the smallest borough geographically. Just to the right of that, there's a building that has a gold pyramid top. That is the Thurgood Marshall Courthouse. The Thurgood Marshall Courthouse is named for Thurgood, Mar Thurgood Marshall. Yay, I could talk. Thurgood Marshall, who was the very first black Supreme Court justice in the United States. He was also the head prosecutor in Brown versus Board of Education, which ended segregation in US public schools. So Thurgood Marshall, a name that more people should know. Now we're gonna continue to cross the bridge and see what else we see. We have reached a part of the bridge that most people love because it's the best place to take photos and get this famous Gothic tower of the Brooklyn Bridge. But I love this spot because we can actually hold on to these steel suspension cables. And I'm stronger than I look, but I can't like make this move at all. This should show you how strong the bridge is. Now, Brooklyn Bridge history. The Brooklyn Bridge was the very first suspension bridge to be held up 
by steel wire cables. Before the Brooklyn Bridge, these suspension cables would have been made out of rope, hemp rope. But John Roebling, who designed the Brooklyn Bridge, he knew that he needed something stronger if he was going to hold up a bridge that's nearly a mile long to cross the East River, which is the body of water that we are going to cross over. And he thought, what if I make that rope using steel? And he did. First, steel suspension cable. This cable made elevators possible. Before they were building the Brooklyn Bridge, we did not have rope that was strong enough to carry elevators of buildings that are over a hundred stories tall. When the bridge was completed in 1883, buildings really weren't taller than three, four, maybe five stories tall. Because of this rope, we were able to build skyscrapers. Because we have skyscrapers, we are able to have eight and a half million people living in New York City. One and a half million people just living on the tiny island of Manhattan. That's only about 23 square miles in size. In many ways, New York City owes everything that it is to this cable and the Brooklyn Bridge. And these are the original cables. You are touching Roebling Steel right here. One of the Brooklyn Bridge's most recognizable features are these brown stone gothic looking towers. There's two of them. One that's considered the Manhattan Tower because it is the closest to Manhattan and one that is considered the Brooklyn Tower because it's closer to Brooklyn. We are right at the Manhattan Tower now. You'll see up at the top, it says 1875. That was the date that that tower was completed. Fun fact. When they were building the foundations for these towers, they were digging and digging and digging, and they couldn't hit bedrock, but the workers' tools were breaking, and they thought, what can we do? They actually halted construction on the Brooklyn Bridge for a little bit. They studied the sediment and discovered that the sediment hadn't moved for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They thought it would be okay. Tower not built on bedrock, hasn't moved since the bridge was completed in 1883, so hopefully it'll last for another bunch of centuries. This bridge is so strong and sturdy and stable. So we're gonna get a little bit closer to that tower and see what we see when we're waiting on the tower. It's gonna be a little exciting because it looks like they're doing some construction there. They're always doing construction on the Brooklyn Bridge. Just the way it is, the walk is still beautiful and totally worthwhile. This is usually the part of the tour where I talk about the history, because when you get to the Manhattan Tower, there are these plaques that have illustrations of some of the construction of the bridge. Uh, unfortunately, the <laughs> construction happening on the bridge currently is blocking off those plaques on the Manhattan side. Fingers crossed, we'll be able to see them when we get to the Brooklyn Tower. So stay tuned for history of the bridge, because it's really, really interesting and cool. And the different personalities who helped to build the bridge and even gave their lives working on the bridge are, are really worth hearing. But we're gonna cross over to the Brooklyn side and hopefully get some really good views on our way. We're now about halfway over the bridge. There's a little smidgen less, but I actually like the view better from here. The reason why I like the view better from here, right now we are over the East River. That is the river that separates Manhattan from the borough of Brooklyn. If you look off to your right as you're heading over to Brooklyn, way off in the distance, you will see the Statue of Liberty. I always get excited when I see the Statue of Liberty. It literally never gets old. And then, if you were to pan the skyline, see One World Observatory, see that Manhattan Tower, see a big glass skyscraper. Um, between the Manhattan Tower and the big glass skyscraper, you'll see the Empire State Building from there. As I stare off at the skyline and I see all of these skyscrapers, some of them over a hundred stories tall, it's interesting for me to think about how this tower, the stone gothic Manhattan Tower of the Brooklyn Bridge, when it was completed, was the tallest structure in the city. 
remember that was before the days of elevators. And in many ways, that tower made this whole skyline possible. And I love to think about that. Um, also, since this was the, the highest structure, uh, many people who were crossing over the bridge had never been up this high in their entire lives. So uh, people equated it to walking on the moon. So as I stare out at the East River, like for me, this isn't particularly high. I've flown in an airplane. I've been to the top of One World Observatory or, or One World Trade Center, the observation deck, which is One World Observatory. Um, but the very first people, uh, they may have never seen a seagull swooping under their feet before. And that's what they would have experienced when walking over the Brooklyn Bridge. And that's just so magical for me to imagine. And I hope that you imagine that too, as you're walking over the bridge. We are approaching the Brooklyn Tower of the Brooklyn Bridge. Fingers crossed there won't be a whole lot of construction. When we get there, it's looking pretty clear. Something to keep in mind. When the Brooklyn Bridge was originally built, it connected two separate cities. You had the city of New York and you had the city of Brooklyn. Brooklyn was its own city. In many ways, the creation of this bridge is part of what led to the great consolidation of 1898 when all of our different boroughs came together to create one city of New York City. So our five boroughs again, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. So today we're just going from one borough to the other. In 1883, you would have been going from one city to another. So we're getting close to Brooklyn. Massive sadness. There is still construction over on the Brooklyn side, so I'm not going to be able to show you the plaques, but I did want to talk a little bit about the history of the Brooklyn Bridge. So the Brooklyn Bridge was designed by a German immigrant named John Roebling. John Roebling designed this bridge. In many ways, it's considered like the strongest bridge that was ever built. Now, if you think about it, when he was building this bridge or designing this bridge, cars didn't exist. All these car honks that you are here, uh, he, he couldn't have imagined those. And the fact that he built this bridge so strong <laughs> thanks to these cables is why we are able to have cars on the bridge today. Sadly, John Roebling never got to live to see a single stone of this bridge put into place. He died before they ever began construction on the bridge. And his son, Washington Roebling, took over the project. And things were going pretty well for Washington Roebling for several years until he came down with the bends. Now the bends uh, is a disease that like scuba divers might get if they, they go down too low in the ocean and come up too fast. It's where you get like air bubbles in your blood. Now when they were building this bridge to make these towers possible, they used new technologies known as caissons, which means uh, chest in French. Uh, and if you really want to learn more about caissons uh, and, and the deep dive into the history of the Brooklyn Bridge, I strongly, strongly suggest that you read The Great Bridge by David McCullough. It is considered by tour guides to be like the number one resource about that. Um, but many of the workers working on the bridge would go down to the caissons under the water and come up too quickly and they would get the bends and some of them died immediately. Some of them got ill and then were fine. Some of them were totally fine. Washington Roebling got the bends and he was paralyzed from the waist down. So he had to sign off of the project. And around 1870, the engineer who, or the person who really took over as the liaison between Washington Roebling and his all male team was Washington Roebling's wife, Emily Roebling. Put this into context. This was 50 years before women had the universal right to vote in all 50 states. This was a year when women were not allowed to go to school to learn how to become engineers. This was a year when most women, if they walked up to a group of men working on a bridge and said, hey, this is how I think you should hang the suspension cables, the men would look at her and laugh and say, oh, it's so cute. You think you know how to build things. Why don't you go home and make me a sandwich? 
but Emily Roebling was so respected by the team. They actually listened to her, a liaising between her husband and the team. And she is in many ways credited as being the person who oversaw the completion of the Brooklyn Bridge. There's usually a plaque in her honor that you can see at this Brooklyn Tower. It unfortunately right now is covered up. She was later recognized as America's very first female engineer. So this bridge is all about woman power. We have made it to Brooklyn. Woohoo! I usually like to joke that as soon as we're in Brooklyn, we all turn into hipsters. Brooklyn's so cool. The area of Brooklyn that we are going to is known as Brooklyn Heights, uh, and then and pieces of it are known as Dumbo. Dumbo stands for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. We're over the Brooklyn Bridge. Remember that the Manhattan Bridge is the blue bridge that's just slightly north of us. But we are going to get off of the bridge. Getting off of the bridge is a little tricky, so stick with me and I'm going to show you the best way to get off of the bridge and then go get pizza. It's almost time for us to get off of the Brooklyn Bridge. To do this, we are going to take a perilous journey into the bike lane. There is a little mini crosswalk. It's really hard to find if you're walking off of the Brooklyn Bridge, so keep your eyes open for it. We're gonna cross that little mini crosswalk, and then we're going to, if you look way off in the distance, you will see there's a brown fence. You wanna be on the left-hand side of that brown fence as you are going to Brooklyn, because that's going to take us into a little tiny staircase, and that little tiny staircase is going to take us into the area of Brooklyn that we want to explore. If you were to stay on this path, you also get off of the Brooklyn Bridge. It takes you into Brooklyn Heights, but much deeper into Brooklyn Heights. So you're going to be on this path for a much, much, much longer walk. We are going to look for the staircase, and that's what, in general, I recommend you do as well. So we're gonna get ready to cross into the bike lane. You wanna make sure when you cross this bike lane but there's not cyclists. We have cyclists coming on both sides of us right now. You don't, you don't want that. <laughs> okay, it's clear. We're going. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, I guess, break up this people chain. <laughs> and you're gonna walk through here, and it's gonna take us into a little mini staircase. Uh, I'm going to let my cameraman actually walk, so he's gonna turn off the camera until we get into the little staircase. So this is a little staircase. It looks a little creepy, totally safe. Yeah. Um, and we're going to head down the staircase. When you get to the bottom of the staircase, you're gonna make an immediate left. So I'm gonna start heading down. So I'm coming off of the stairs, making an immediate left. And then we're gonna get to the end of this block. And we're gonna make an immediate left again. So we're actually walking underneath the Brooklyn Bridge right now. And after we do this like little, I, it's almost like threading underneath the bridge. So after we do this, we get to the main street up ahead. We're gonna make a right. We're gonna stay on the bridge side, but we're gonna make a right because this is going to get us to where the delicious food is. So we're on this main street. This is known as Old Fulton Street, named for the Fulton Ferry Landing. Uh, it, before the bridge was built, the only way that you could get between Brooklyn and Manhattan was by ferry boat. Ferry boats are awesome. They're even more awesome in the summertime. Uh, the East River used to freeze all the time and people would get stuck on these boats trying to go back and forth. That's one of the reasons why John Roebling had the idea for the Brooklyn Bridge to begin with. Very first bridge crossing the East River. So we're gonna head down Old Fulton Street. And we're actually heading back towards the East River. So follow me. I feel super lucky. We are here at Juliana's Pizza and we managed to snag a table. Usually this place is so crowded that there's a wait that can easily be one, two, three hours long. And we got this beautiful outdoor table at Juliana's. Many people consider Juliana's to be the best traditional New York City pizza in New York City. I ordered a Prosecco. I decided to treat myself to a Prosecco. Look at how big this Prosecco is. I'm so excited. We have our pizza. 
from Juliana's. Look at that. It's so delicious looking. Um, so I just want to talk before I shove this in my face about what makes New York City pizza, New York City pizza. So New York City pizza is pizza that is made in a coal burning oven. Juliana's has a coal burning oven. Because of that, you have this really thin crust. They tend to not sell it by the slice to get a whole pie. I'm probably gonna shove this whole pie in my face. We got the margarita pizza with pepperoni. Really good pepperoni. You know it's really good fresh pepperoni when the pepperoni curls up and makes this cup. And let me, let me try a bite. It gets the shimmy. It is perfect. And if um, there's a too long of a wait here, get your pizza to go. You can sit by the waterfront and eat it. But right now I'm going to shove this in my face and I'm gonna let cameraman eat his pizza too. So I just wanna take a moment. We are leaving Juliana's. That pizza was incredible. Eating traditional New York City pizza is something that you must do while you're in New York City. It's like a perfect afternoon, walking over the Brooklyn Bridge, eating that pizza. And then when you're done with the pizza, you can go across the street to the Brooklyn Ice Cream Factory and get ice cream. It's incredible ice cream, especially on a really hot summer's day. They tend to not have like crazy flavors, but like their chocolate ice cream is gonna be the best chocolate ice cream that you've ever had. Uh, and if you prefer, we actually have Shake Shack over here and they're really famous for their frozen custards that come in a bunch of seasonal flavors and if for some reason you're weird and you don't like pizza they have great hamburgers and hot dogs and food at Shake Shack as well but we're gonna go explore by the waterfront here I am casually chilling on this bench getting a glorious view of the skyline uh, this is Brooklyn Bridge Park and if you can't get a seat at Juliana's, I recommend that you order your pizza out and eat it here. You can have a picnic on the grassy green areas. You can sit on one of these benches. They even have a few tables set up where you could eat your pizza or your hamburgers and hot dogs if you go to Shake Shack or your ice cream if you go to the Brooklyn Ice Cream Factory. And it's just so relaxing. Look at this view that you get from Brooklyn Bridge Park. So for me, uh, when you're talking about when you're talking about must-see tourist attractions or tourist traps in New York City, for me, walking over the Brooklyn Bridge, this iconic New York City landmark, getting New York City pizza, authentic New York City pizza made in a coal-burning oven from Juliana's, and then coming here to Brooklyn Bridge Park and just taking in the skyline. You can even see the Statue of Liberty off in the distance. Why would you not do this? This is such a New York moment. And it's truly a New York moment that both locals and tourists alike can enjoy. We are going to exit Brooklyn Bridge Park. We're actually going to leave the Fulton Ferry Historic District, and we're actually gonna go underneath the Brooklyn Bridge to go to a new neighborhood known as Dumbo. Now I mentioned before that Dumbo stands for down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass, and there's a lot of super fun stuff to explore in Dumbo, so follow me. We're standing in front of Jane's Carousel, which is one of everyone's favorite things to do here in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Jane's Carousel is named for Jane Walentis. The Walentis family purchased this carousel and they actually hired the people who do the detailing from Mercedes, like on Mercedes cars, to painstakingly restore each of these carousel horses. Now, unfortunately, Jane very recently passed away. Her carousel uh, preserves her memory in a way that brings light and joy to everyone. This carousel was originally from 1922. I believe it was originally from Youngstown, Ohio, and everyone loves it, no matter what your age is. It also is really great for taking Instagram photos. So if you're like me and love to take Instagram photos, this is a great stop for you. I am here at the intersection of Water Street and Washington Street. And this is one of the most famous places in Dumbo because it is considered one of the most Instagrammable places in New York City. Because if you look this way, you will see an arch of the Manhattan Bridge and underneath the arch, you will see the Empire State Building. So here I am being an influencer. We're back to Old Fulton Street. If you recall Old Fulton Street, 
is the main road that we took towards the waterfront to get to Juliana's Pizza and then explore Brooklyn Bridge Park. David and I are actually going to walk in the opposite direction of the waterfront. We're just gonna keep following Old Fulton Street. It's gonna go underneath this bridge. That's the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, very glamorous. It's gonna slightly curve around and that is going to take us to the subway that is going to take us back to Manhattan. Now we're gonna take the subway to get back home. However, you can take the New York City Ferry when the New York City Ferry is operating from Fulton Ferry Landing, or you can always walk over the Brooklyn Bridge again, or you also saw how close the Manhattan Bridge was to us. So you could walk over the Manhattan Bridge if you just wanted to get a different bridge to explore. But I hope you enjoyed this little tour of the Brooklyn Bridge and fun stuff that you can do underneath and around the Brooklyn Bridge in Brooklyn. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute. Thank you so much for watching.